Family Theater presents Jeff Chandler and Ruth Hussey. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents East of Puntas, starring Jeff Chandler. Here is your hostess, Ruth Hussey. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, East of Puntas, starring Jeff Chandler as Harry. I've lived in the Peruvian village of Puntas for a longer time than I like to think about. Living is quiet and easy. Today, tomorrow, same as yesterday, nothing much happens. Once a month, a truck of supplies comes up from Lima. Now and then a tourist finds his way and wants to climb a mountain, do a little fishing, or look at a relic. That's how I make a buck. In between tourists, I just relax. It's, it's a good life if you don't hanker after kicking up a dust. And I qualify. My office is right in the thick of things, a bench here in the plaza. I don't need any billboards or calling cards. Natives all know me, pointing me out to any likely-looking customer. Harry Turner, guide and interpreter. Mr. Turner? Yeah, you uh, have an appointment? I'm Kenneth Vickers, professor of archaeology. Well, sit down, professor. I'd like to engage you to lead my party. Well, I... I'm pretty busy right now. I've got a dozen irons in the fire. Where do you plan on going? Past the country of the old Inca ruins. Oh, I... You're out of luck, Professor. No souvenir hunting. The Peruvian government has laws. Well, I have it on excellent authority that in a particular section of mountain jungle, there's an Inca tribe still surviving. Yeah, I've heard the rumor. The mountains are steep, Professor. Trails are slippery, chasms deep. In the jungle, not only snakes in the grass, but Indians. Ugly customers with poison darts who don't like company. I, I could give other reasons why I've never troubled myself about the rumor. Uh, would you uh, give me the other reasons, Mr. Turner? Well, for one, stories have been widespread about white men making their way into the country of old Inca ruins and never being heard of again. Oh, nonsense. Exactly, <laughs> Professor, nonsense. Still, natives are strangely mum about a particular section of mountain jungle where an Inca tribe is supposed to still survive. Oh, Indian superstition. That's right. Nonsense and superstition. Two more reasons why I've never bothered about the room. I have facts, Mr. Turner. And the price? How much would you charge to lead this expedition? Five hundred dollars. I have the money. <laughs> Professor Vickers had maps and the five hundred dollars. You think this expedition foolish, don't you, Mr. Turner? Now, look, Professor, this is a job to me if... If you say there's a tribe of Incas running around the hills and you think you know where they are, I'll lead your party. Personally, I think all you're going to run into is a few old ruins and a couple of sore feet. Look at this. Where'd you get this map? From the historical archives in Lima. It's a copy of a map dating back to the days of Pizarro and the Spanish conquistadores. Here. Examine the markings. This trail up the mountainside, oh. thence under a waterfall and up into a valley. Uh, are you at all familiar with this terrain, Mr. Turner? Uh, to a point. Is this the, the route you and your party intend to follow? Yes. I'm certain that in this valley we'll find sights that no civilized man has ever seen before. Like a kid with new toys, the professor gathered up his maps and stuffed them in his briefcase. I fingered the 500. 
The professor pumped my arm and said he'd bring his party around right away. I waited and started thinking. I knew the jungle, the trails and mountains marked on the map, but that second part, the valley above the waterfall, in the first place, how did you get there? And in the second place, just where was it? Here we are, Mr. Turner. Oh. I want you to meet the other members of our party. This is Miss Alden, uh, Marion Alden, my assistant. Mr. Turner, how do you do? Miss yes. Alden is a former pupil. She's now an archaeologist in her own right. And this is Mr. Marshall, Bill Marshall. Turner? Hi. Mr. Marshall is our official photographer. He's also a member of the advertising agency financing our little expedition. Uh, Mr. Turner is to be the, our Cicerone. <laughs> well... Well, we place ourselves entirely in your hands, Harry. Oh, Mr. Turner, when Professor Vickers first told me about the trip, I begged him to take me along. You know, whenever I think of primitive people living and practicing rituals and customs just as they did thousands of years ago... I didn't tell Marion Alden the stories I'd heard. She'd probably find out soon enough. I'd seen others full of gush and ginger at first. After a few weeks of playing footsie with tropical snakes and batting at king-size insects, they're ready to go back home. Let their imaginations get excited over less primitive things. <laughs> All set, Turner, to march into the deepest depths of the mysterious Peruvian jungle with rod and camera. Tune in tomorrow for another exciting chapter. <laughs> You know, when I get back to that chrome-plated pressure cooker I call the agency, I think I'll have the old man make me a VP in charge of civil... Bill Marshall handled a toothpaste account, or soap, something, for the advertising outfit that paid him. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. There are a lot of things about that trip I'm still not sure of. <laughs> The next morning, at dawn, we started walking inland. I was up front with the professor, Marion and Marshall next, and bringing up the rear, our guide boys, Tomas and Felipe, leading the two pack mules. The low-hanging mist and the tangled undergrowth of the jungle made it pretty slow going at first. Can we expect this kind of heat for the whole trip, Mr. Turner? Oh, it might cool down a bit when we hit the uplands. Hey, Turner. Yeah? Mary and I have been listening to these two boys you've got handling the mules. What's the matter with them? Well, nothing I know of. Why? They seem to be grumbling about something, Harry. <laughs> well, that's part of their job, Miss Alden. Time to worry about your pack boys is when they don't grumble. Un momento, amigos. Si, senor. Why well, are you telling them to hold it up? Any other questions, Marshal? Have you told the boys exactly where we're going? I, uh, I told them we were going inland. I thought so. That's what they're grousing about. They don't know what they're getting into. Mr. Turner, you should have let them know what to expect. Professor, uh... these boys are no different from other natives in Puntas. If I told them we were in search of a lost tribe of Incas, they wouldn't even consider the job. You're going to have to tell them sooner or later. Professor Vickers, let's, let's settle something right here. Either I run this show or you take back the 500 and forget the whole deal. Now just a minute, Turner. You made a bargain. That's right, Willie, and you weren't any part of it. Uh, uh, gentlemen, I'm sure we can settle this disagreement amicably. I'm willing, but it's got to be settled now. Uh, Bill, I do think, in all fairness to Mr. Turner, that we uh, should defer to his judgment. After all, he's had quite a lot of experience crossing the jungle. And... Okay, Professor, it's your party. Ah, that's the spirit. I'm, I'm sure we're in good hands. Well, Harry, should we be pushing along? Good enough, Professor. Oh, Professor Vickers. Yes, Marion. Would you mind changing places with me so I can walk up here in front? Those pack mules make me nervous. Why, not at all, Marion. Do you mind, Mr. Turner? No, ma'am. Well, now that all the 440 seats have been sold, uh, suppose we put the show on the road, huh? Whenever you're ready, Mr. Marshall. I'm ready. I'm glad. Bueno, muchachos. Vámonos. <laughs> The rest of that day passed uneventfully, and so did the next. According to our timetable, we should have reached the mountain trail leading up to the waterfall late the third afternoon. But we were still four or five hours away from it when twilight started to close in. I, uh, I think we'd better camp here for the night, Professor. Well, there's still some daylight. 
Can't we go on a bit farther? Uh, it'd be slow going. We'll make the same distance in half the time tomorrow morning. Uh, very well. I suppose we can use the rest. I know I can. My feet are killing me. Uh, don't tell me the jungle's losing its charm for you, Marion. Not just the jungle, Mr. Marshall. Oh, you mean me. Well, if that's just because I'm, well, I'm out of my element. Now, if I were the outdoor type like Harry here... Give it a rest, will you, Marshal? But you are the outdoor type. Yeah, and you're the witty type, but give it a rest, huh? Professor, would you mind helping me unpack so I can... Oh, look out! It's, it's a snake! It's a snake! Ah. It's gonna stop! Don't move, Marion. Hey, you got him, Harry! Oh, thank heavens! Take it easy. I... Easy, easy. You're all right. It's dead, Harry. Right through the neck. Uh, are you sure? Absolutely, absolutely. Come... Come see for yourself, Mary. No, don't get it away from here. Well, that was pretty good shooting, Turner. Thanks. We're getting to be quite a hero. You got a pistol? Where were you? I've never seen such beautiful markings Can't on the Can't we stop record? talking about the horrid thing and get rid of it? Harry, please. No, sure. Tomas, saque eso de aquí. Pronto. Si, sí, senor. All right, folks. What do you say we have some dinner? Just before I turned in that night, I told Tomas and Felipe exactly where we were headed and what we were looking for. They didn't say much, but I could tell they weren't in love with the idea. I offered to double their wages for the rest of the trip if they'd stay on, and they said they'd think it over. That usually means no. So I wasn't exactly surprised when Marshall shook me awake the following morning. Turner, wake up. Wake up. <sighs> What's the matter? The pack boys are gone. Oh, are they take the mules? No, but... Say, what goes on here? Did you know they were leaving? I, I had a hunch they might. And you're the great white hunter who was going to tell them all about it in his own good time. Well, we got three days out of them. Consider yourself lucky. Yeah, now what? We lead our own mules. Why, you've got us into a fine mess. I'll quit your belly aching. You can use their wages to buy sirloin with when you get back to Lima. If I get back to Lima? I'll put you on the truck personally. Thanks. For nothing. You're welcome. How about waking up the others while I rustle some breakfast? I ought to get going before the sun's up. It was almost noon when we reached the foot of the mountain and started up the narrow winding trail toward the waterfall. Then, as we got closer and the falls came into view, I saw one of the reasons why their secret had been kept for so long. Harry. Look. Yeah. What is it? A bridge. One of those old rope bridges. Brother. And will you look at that chasm? Isn't there another way over? I don't know. What's your map say, Professor? I was just looking at it. The chasm is marked as a dried-up stream here, see? Mm -hmm. I'd say it's been dried up since the Stone Age. Maybe this isn't the right place. Well, there's your falls, there's your bridge. It's got to be. Well, there's no other way over. See, the chasm circles halfway around the mountain. Mm. How old would you say that bridge is, Turner? Older than all of us put together. Uh, and I'd call that a conservative estimate. I've read of some still in use that go back to the 17th century. Huh. Well, if we're going to try it, I'd say our best chance is one at a time. Uh, after you, Buana. I figured that's how you'd want to do it, Marshal. <laughs> A few minutes later, with the professor and Marshall holding onto the other end of the scaling rope around my waist, I stepped out onto the narrow, swaying bridge that hung over the chasm. How's it feel, Harry? Flimsy. The supports on our side seem to be holding up all right. Well, hooray for our side. Do you want more slack in the scaling rope? No, no, keep it as taut as you can. I... I felt the scaling rope tighten around me, and I started inching my way across to the other side of the chasm. I was almost halfway over when I heard the professor yell, Harry! Look out! I turned and looked down at the shaky floor of woven hemp trembling beneath me. A wide swatch of it had torn loose and dangled limply in space. If I'd moved a single step more, I'd have been walking on thin air. I... I see it, Professor. Thanks. I think you'd better come back, Harry. No, no, I can get around it all right. I'm over the worst part anyway. Well, do you think the rest of us can get over? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, once I'm across, we'll have an anchor on both sides. That way it'll be a cinch. It wasn't exactly a cinch getting the others across. They finally made it. 
And soon we were standing at the foot of the waterfall. Well, there she be, Professor. Now what? We go under the falls, or rather, through them, Bill. And after that? If my information is correct, Harry, once we're beneath the falls, we should discover a flight of steps. Steps? Yes, cut into solid rock, leading up through the mountain and out the other side into the hidden valley. Shall we have a look? Professor Vickers stepped onto the slippery shelf of rock next to the falls, hunched his shoulders, and disappeared into the torrent of falling water. Moments later, Marshall followed him, then Marion. I went in last after tethering the two mules to a nearby tree. Harry! Look! I was right! Here they are! The steps! He was right. With his long gray hair matted down over his face, Professor Vickers looked more like a rain-soaked billy goat than an archaeologist. But he was right. The steps led upward. And from high above them, a shaft of distant sunlight streamed into the cavern behind the falls. We started climbing, and in less than half an hour, we had found the source of that sunlight. The hidden valley. Oh, it's beautiful. Say... This is a valley. What's a valley? It stretches for miles. Harry, didn't I tell you we'd find sights no civilized man had ever seen? I gotta hand it to you, Professor. I... Hey, get down, down. What, what was that? It sounded like an arrow. Down, Marsh. Harry. Uh, it wasn't an arrow. It was a dart. Look what's sticking in that tree behind you. Good heavens. Where'd it come from? Blowgun. Keep down. But who could have shot it? Whoever it was can't be far off. I got a hunch there's more than one of them. Listen. I heard it. What's he saying? I don't know. I never heard a dialect like that. Can you see him? No. Uh, I'm going to wriggle up to that bush and take a look. Be careful. Holy cats. See something? Yeah. Yeah, I see something. Really something. There were better than two dozen of them. Savages ringed around the slope below the cave we'd come out of. They were standing less than 50 yards away, staring straight at us. And except for their leader, who'd yelled those words I didn't understand, not one of them made a sound. Harry, who are they? I don't know, but they know we're here. We might as well get up and show ourselves. Look, their, their chief is walking toward us. Yeah. Will you look at the size of that guy? He was a giant. Better than seven feet tall. And although he wore the same feathered Inca headdress as the others and his skin was brown from the sun, his features were those of a white man. As he came toward us, I, I raised my hand in what I hoped he would take as a gesture of friendship. Venimos aquí como amigos. Queremos estar en paz. Habla usted inglés? What? Yes. I thought so. You're an American, aren't you? Say, who are you? Don't come any closer to me. You sound like an American yourself. I used to be. Or are you a, a prisoner of this tribe? No. I'm one of their leaders. These people are direct descendants of the Incans. This is sacred land to them, and you violate Well, now, look here, buddy. I don't know what your angle is living with a lot of savages, but... You stupid... Who are you calling stupid? Shut up, Marshal. Don't you realize that at one word from me, you can be killed where you stand? But huh? we haven't done anything wrong. Not intentionally, perhaps. That's the trouble with people like you. You tear things and people to pieces, but... Never intentionally. Well, uh, can't you explain to your friends that we blundered in here by mistake? Did you? Well, not exactly, but... This is an archaeological expedition. We were looking for this hidden valley then it and we... wasn't a mistake. No, but if you told them it was... I it... said I was one of their leaders. Unless the others agreed, I couldn't force them to let you go even if I wanted to. Even if you wanted to? Look, you're nothing to me, mister. You're just another punk. I've seen you a thousand times with your expensive girlfriends out slumming at the colonel. What are you talking about? You wouldn't understand if I told you. Well, look, we... I figure you've got your reasons for being here. And they, well, they're your own business, but we're in a jam. I've already told you. I know what you told us, and I, I know you're pretty sore at the world about something. I was a freak. A freak in a sideshow. 
People used to come and laugh their heads off. Well, nobody's laughing at you now, mister. You're the only chance we've got. He stared at me for a few moments, and then he turned and shouted something to the men behind him. They came forward slowly, some with blow guns, others carrying wooden broadswords. The big man spoke briefly to them, and a few moments later we were herded down the slope toward a distant cluster of stone huts. When we reached the village, we were taken to a large circular hut at the edge of a clearing and ordered inside. We stood and watched as two natives rolled a large rock back across the entrance. Well, that does it. We're cooked now. Oh, take it easy, Marshal. All I've done so far is coop us up. Now, what kind of a chance do you think we'll have with these savages after that overgrown lunatic gets through steaming them up? That guy may be a lot of things, but I don't mark him as crazy. Professor yeah. Vickers, what will they do to us? Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. I, I feel so guilty for having dragged you all into this. Oh, forget it, Professor. It breaks of the game. I've been trying to collect my wits. If, if this tribe is living in the strict tradition of the Incas, they, they're doubtless sun worshippers. In which case, it may be their practice to offer sacrifice to the sun. Human sacrifice. But the tall blonde man, how did the he... The way ever... it looks, the tribe has accepted him as their leader. You notice he carried no weapon. Perhaps because of his light skin and hair, they feel he's an emissary from the sun god. It's fantastic. Now, cases of this kind aren't unheard of. I recall... Uh, at the time of the conquistadores... Uh, come on, come on, all this talk is dandy, but it won't get us out of here. You got any suggestions, Marshal? Yeah. Why don't we try to work on that giant? Or from a bribe of some kind? Listen, what's that? Drums. Uh, maybe they're just sending a message to another village. No, I'm afraid not. Those sound like some ceremonial drums to me, the, the kind used in the ritual of sacrifice. <laughs> We stood there in the center of the hut looking at one another and listening to the insistent throb of the drums. I realized the big guy must have been telling the truth. They weren't going to let us go after all. Harry, someone's moving the rock away from the entrance. Yeah, well, they don't waste much time. It's the big guy. He's coming in alone. Why are they putting the rock over the entrance again? Well, it beats me. I told the chief I wanted to speak to you alone before the sacrifice began. We're, uh, we're out of luck, huh? As far as they're concerned. Oh, no. And it's just breaking your heart, too, isn't it? Come on, Marshal, that won't help. This is how you get even with all the people that laughed at you. I huh? tried to talk to I'll them. I'll bet you did. You're really a freak. You're a freak between the ears. Marshal, shut up. No. I don't blame him. Maybe he's right. Maybe he was, anyhow. These natives, they think I'm a kind of deity. They've never laughed at me for being tall. I jumped ship at Lima four years ago, knocked around, stumbled into this valley. The natives fell on their knees when they saw me. You... you mean you didn't come in under the waterfall? No. There's another entrance. They were good to me. They're my people now. I, uh, can get you out of here. You... you what? But how? There's a tunnel under this hut. You're standing right over the trap door leading to it. Oh, I'll be... Look. I got it myself when I first got here, just in case they ever turned on me. So what'll they do when they find we're gone? I'll... I'll tell them it was the command of their deity. In a way, that's true. Well, you better be going. The tunnel comes out at the west end of the village. Keep going that way until you find a stream. Then head north. You'll be all right. I... I don't know. I... I don't know how... we can ever thank you. Don't bother. This makes us square all around. I... I want to apologize for... well... for what I called you a few minutes ago. A freak? <laughs> Why apologize? I'm still over seven feet tall. No, mister. You're a lot bigger than that now. The tunnel came out just where he said it would, and nobody followed us. Maybe the natives were afraid to go that far from their village. Or maybe they were just kneeling in front of the big guy, staring at him. Shh! 
Well, we got back to Puntas. No one talked much. The big guide sort of stopped us and made us think. Next afternoon, the truck from Lima pulled up in front of the hotel. We just stood there a long time there. There still wasn't much to talk about. At last, the truck pulled away. Marion, the professor, and Bill, they, they waved goodbye. I, I waved back. I called out. It was like taking leave of old friends. There, there's still a lot of things about that trip I'm not sure of. But one thing. The professor's map led us to something more than a lost Inca tribe and archaeological treasures. again. You know, a remark I heard the other day struck me rather forcefully, and I'd like to pass it along to you. The best I can hope for, said a friend of mine, is to live to the age of 70. That'll give me 840 months of life. Now, I figured it out that for a third of a man's life, he's not quite sure what it's all about. He spends another third just sleeping, and that leaves 280 months in which he can accomplish anything. 280 months in which to justify his existence. Well, no matter how you look at it, we don't have any time to waste if we're going to accomplish the good that God expects of us. We certainly can't try to dodge our opportunities. And above all, we cannot overlook our responsibilities to our families. For that's the vocation in life to which most of us are called. And if we wholeheartedly dedicate ourselves to making our homes as happy and holy as God meant them to be, then we'll surely not be wasting the life that has been given us. And God will help us do this if we have the vision and the faith to pray to him daily in the circle of the home. For I can promise you this, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you East of Puntas, starring Jeff Chandler. Ruth Hussey was your hostess. Others in our cast were Theodore Von Ells, Ted DeCorsia, Yvonne Patey, and John Stevenson. The script was written by Jerry Zinnemann, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Lou X. Landsworth. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present... A Fine Wedding for Angelita, starring Maureen O'Sullivan, J. Carol Nash, and Ricky Vera. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.